Open your book to page 128. This is lesson 4.2, and this lesson is about proportion. A proportion is, um, is the statement that two ratios or two rates are equal. What it means is that if you have A over B, so this is a ratio or rate, and it's equal to C over D. So when two rates or two ratios are equal, this is a proportion. And each of these have a, a names for it. So this one is a first term. So this is the first. This is the second. So first, second. And this is the third. And this is the fourth. So first term, second term, third term, and fourth term. And also, if you if you kind of stretch it out, if you line it up, okay, you're going to get A, B, C, D, right? So the things, the, the one in the middle, or this one over here, this is called a means. So the means are the one that in the middle, and the A and the D, the one on the outside, these are called extremes. Okay, so, so again, first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and the one in the middle, Okay, th those are means, and the, the one on the ends are extremes. Now let's go to example one. Example one, you have two over seven is equal to six over 21. So they want you to identify the terms and the means and the extremes. Okay, so, so the first term is two, the second term is 7, the third term is 6, and the fourth term is 21. And the means, the means are the one that means would be the 7 and the 6. So 7 and 6 are the means. And the extremes, the extremes are the 2 and the 21. Okay, so just be familiar with the term, uh, with all the, the terminology. Okay, now let's go to the middle of the page 129. Right in the middle of page 29, uh, that is a rule that says, it is the cross multiplication rule. So when you have proportion, you got A over B equal to C over D. So what you can do is that the cross multiplication, so B times C will equal to A times D. So B times C equal to A times D. So this is called the cross, uh, cross multiplication rule. And so let's go to example two. So you can use the cross multiplication to check if they are equal. It says, do the giving ratio form a proportion? So A, 5 over 12. And so you have question mark. Question mark means does it equal uh, 3 over 7. So are they equal? Well, if they are equal, then the cross multiplication should, should be equal. So if you notice, when you cross multiply, you get 36, and you cross multiply, you get 35. So this is not equal, okay? So the A is no, okay? It's not equal. And if you go to B, 16 over 6 is equal to 8 over 3. Again, you cross multiply, you get 48, and then multiply equal 48. So this one is yes. Okay. Now you go to C. You got one half over three. Is this equal to one and one third over eight? Okay. So again, you can cross multiply. So you got three times. Now I'm going to convert this into improper fractions of before over three. So it's like, again, right now, I don't know if it's equal or not, so I'm going to put a question mark. Equal to this times, so the first times the fourth, okay? So now let's go multiply out, so this cancel out, so it's equal to four, and this one, you cancel out, and so yes, they're equal. So the answer is yes. Okay. So you can just cross multiply, see they're equal. If, if it's a proportion, then they're equal. If it's not, then it's not a proportion. Okay, now let's go and let's go to page 130. 
So page 130, you're going to solve the proportions. So on the top, if you have 2 over 3, it's equal to x over 51. So to solve for x, what you can do is that, that you can do the cross multiplication and then you can do it. But it's easier if, if you're just going to do the, the opposite. See, right now this is x divided by 51. So to undo the division, you multiply. Okay, so again, easier way to do is just uh, going multiply by 51. Okay. But in the book, they show you the cross multiplication, which is kind of longer, but that, that's going to use the cross multiplication technique. Then. So you got, so you got 3x equal to, uh, when you multiply, you get 2 times 51, right? You can 3 times x equal to 2 times 51. And then to solve for x, you have to divide both sides by 3, divide by 3. So don't multiply out yet. Okay, so this will cancel out, and this will cancel out, right? Divide by 3, so it equals 34. So you can just do the cross multiplying. Okay? Another method is, instead of, just, instead of cross multiplying, you can do the regular solving technique. So again, this is x divided by 51. So to undo the divide, you have to multiply. So you multiply by 51. So when you multiply by 51 on this side, you have to multiply by 51 on this side. Okay, you have to do the same on both sides. So that is we cancel out. So x will equal to, you cancel, right, divide by 3, you get 17, so you get 34. So either way, so this, this method is save you one step. Okay. Because when you cross multiply, then you have to divide after that. Okay, so let's go to example 3. You got x over 25 is equal to 6 over 5. So again, I'm going to do both methods for you, okay? So this one, let's do the cross multiplication. So it doesn't matter which one you write first. So this one multiply, you get 5x. You multiply, again, I, don't multiply out yet. You don't want to multiply into big number, then you have to reduce. So I'm going to just write it out, okay? Not actually multiply out yet. And then to, to do, uh, to find the x, you need to divide by 5. Divide by 5, so this will cancel out. Now 5 and 25 can, can cancel, right? You get, 1 and 5, so x equal to 30. Okay, so again, don't waste your time multi multi multiplying to big number. You want to cancel to make a number small before you multiply. Now, over here, the second technique, instead of doing the cross multiplying, you're just going to go and solve by right, undoing things. So this is x divided by 25. So to, to undo the divide by 25, you need to multiply by 25. And because you multiply by 25, you have to multiply by 25. That's what equal means, right? Equal means whatever you do on one side, you're going to do exactly the same on the other side. And so that 25 will cancel out, and 5 and 25 can cancel, and so x equal to 30. So either way, you should get the same answer. But this one is one, you know, save you one step. Okay, let's go to example 4. So it's solved 2 over 3 equal to x over 150. I'm going to just go and multiply by 150. Okay? So make sure, you, make sure you multiply on the top. So multiply by 150. Okay? So that this will cancel. And now 3 and 150 can cancel by 3. And this will be 50. So x equal to 100. Okay? So again, the, uh, the reason I do this method is a little bit quicker. It so saves you one step. Okay? Okay, let's go to example 5. You got 42 over x equal to 28 over 12. Okay, so this one, this one you cannot do this method because x is on the bottom. So let's go and do the regular cross multiplying. Okay, so again, that's why you want to learn more than one method because sometimes one type of problem is easier with one method way, you know, versus the other. So the more method you know, um, then the better it would be for you. Okay, so let's go and cross multiply. So I get 28x. You always write a number before the variable, okay? And you cross multiply. So you got 42 and 12. Again, don't multiply out into a big number because you're going to end up wasting time. So just write it out for now. And to get rid of the 28, you divide, right? So divide by 28 on this side, you have to do the same on this side. That's what equal means. Equal is whatever you do on one side, you do exactly the same on the other side. So 28 will cancel out, again, because that's the reason you want to divide by 28 to cancel out, right? Now over here, you can go and reduce. So this can divide by 2, so you get 14. Divide by 2, you get 6. 
Now this one you can divide by 2 again. So divide by 2, you get 7. Divide by 2, you get 3. Now that, that, that's, this one can divide by 7. So divide by 7, you get 1. Divide by 7, you get 6. So x equal to 18. Okay, let's go to example 6. You got x over 2 is equal to 15 over 25. Now this one we can do the, the other method, the, the shorter method. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. Again, this is divide by 2. So to undo divide, you have to multiply, right? So the 2 and 2 will cancel out. Now over here, we're going to start to cancel things out. You got 15 and 25. You can divide by 5. You get 3. Divide by 5, you get 5. So it will be 6 over 5. You can just leave it as an improper fraction. Don't waste your time. Try to convert, okay? Okay, so let's go to example 7 on page 132. Example 7. So you have p over 3 is equal to 5 over 6 over 5. Okay, so again, when this get a bit complicated, let's go and do the, the cross multiplying technique. Right? So this one, you always try to do the variable first. So 5 times p, so this is 5p equal to this one over here should be 3 times 6, uh, 5 over 6. Okay. So now you have to get rid of the 5. Now to get rid of the 5, if you divide, and if you divide, it's going to become very messy. So instead of divide by 5, okay, when, you already, when you have a fraction already, what you want to do is you want to times it by 1 fifth. Okay, times by 1 fifth. So that way, this will cancel out. Okay? Again, you don't want to divide right now. If you divide, you divide, you're going to end up with a complex fraction. So multiply by one fifth. So multiply by one fifth. Right? So again, you, that's what equal means, right? They should do the same on both sides. So now five and one fifth, this will cancel out. So you got P equal to, now this will cancel out, and this is three over one, right? So cancel these things out, so you get one, and this get two. So answer equal to one half. Okay, let's go to example 8. You have 3 and 1 half over 5 and 1 fourth is equal to x over 4. So now it's getting a bit messy. Okay, so what you want to do first is let's go and convert mixed number into improper fraction. See, when you start to get into algebra, mixed number is kind of not very useful. Okay, so you want to stay away from mixed number uh, usually. So let's go and convert this into improper fraction. So you get 7 over 2 over 21 over 4 equal to x over 4. Okay. So now you can, now you have to watch your fraction line, right? So this is a fraction, this is a fraction. So now you can go and cross multiply. Now when you have complex fraction, you have to repeat the process twice. Okay. So multiply, so you got 21 over 4x, right? So you can put it this way. Now this one over here, you're going to have 7 over 2 times 4 over 1, okay? You can put everything as a fraction. Okay, then what you can do next is, you can, um, again, to get rid of these, what you want to do is, to undo these, you, you want to do something called a reciprocal. So multiply by reciprocal. So multiply by 4 over 21, okay? So multiply by 4 over 21, multiply by 4 over 21, right? Again, so whatever you do on this side, you need to do on this side, right? And the reason you do that is so that this will cancel out, okay? So multiply by reciprocals. So you got x equal, so now this one, you, you're going to start to cancel things out. So 7 and 21, you get 1 and 3, and 2 and 4, you get 1 and 2. So the answer would be 8 over 3, and that's it. Okay, so you can summarize what we're talking about. So when you have mixed numbers, convert into improper fraction, then you, you, you cross-multiply, and then you times by reciprocal. So this is kind of the key step over here. Multiply by reciprocal. Same thing over here, see? You multiply by reciprocal. Reciprocal means you can flip upside down. Okay. So multiply by, so a number multiplied by is, is reciprocal will, will give you one. Okay. okay, let's go to example nine.
So you got 1.5 over 100 equal to A over 2.4. Okay, so again, let's go and cross multiply. So you, can, so you got 100A equal to 1.5 times 2.4. So you can you can go off to the side. So so you got one hundred a is equal to so one point five times two point four. So multiply four times five is twenty carry two. One times four is four plus two give you sixty. Two times five is ten carry one. Two times one is two plus one is three. So three sixty and that's one two two decimal places. So you got three point six. Okay, so now to solve this, you need to go and divide by 100. Divide by 100. So A equal to, so 100 and 100 cancel, all right? Now, whenever you divide by 100, see there are two zeros? There are two zeros. It tells you you have to move decimal over two places. So move over two places, you're going to get 0 0.036. Right? You just move decimal places over. Now, how do you know which way to move? When you divide, your number is going to be smaller, right? So when the number is need to get smaller, you need to move decimal to the left. Okay. And so that's how you know it's this way.